Ed Fuller, BTEC Sport, Media Impact on Sport. Um, today I'm going to talk about the influence the media has on sport in the present day and the influence it can going to continue to have as it advances. So first I'm going to talk about the experiences of sport and how media allows people to have a better experience of sport and get more into it. Um, firstly, media coverage of sport has allowed easy access to millions of people. This has led, you know, through major sporting competitions being shown on places like the BBC, ITV, all over the TV. Um, it's all over the internet. Everyone can see it whenever they want. Um, this has led to huge public exposure as more people can see it and get involved and take an interest in the sport. And as a result of this, you know, this greater interest, people go into the sport themselves and there's high levels of participation which just advances the sport in general. It's really good for all sports. So that's really good. Um, next thing we'll talk about is the media as an outlet for sponsorship and advertising. So media coverage is one thing has allowed companies to advertise during sporting competitions, like on TV, um, like they would anywhere else. Um, this has brought loads and loads of money into sport, into all sports, um, and allowed athletes to go pro, relying just on their sport um, and really focusing on that and not having to have another job as well as that and make a much better amount of money from it. Um, this means like that the athletes can really focus all their time and all their effort onto their sport and further improve world records and world standards which is just a higher, better of um, sport, high level of sport and as a result the higher standard attracts more attention and more news and the sport grows and grows so you know it's a really good thing for the sport. Um, but the one problem with it is with advertising is that it starts to take away from the um, let me find the word immersion immersion in the sport you know if you're watching a game of football or a game of rugby and suddenly the adverts come on halfway through you're sort of taken out of the sport and you're watching these adverts and you're less into it you're less inclined to watch it so that's one problem it's sort of driving people away more and more, ad more and more adverts leading people to watch sport on the internet or somewhere else where there's going to be less money in it and the athletes are going to suffer. Um, with media coverage comes the need to advertise. As I just said, with, this is more on the to topic of sensationalism now. You know, everyone hates advertising. Um, and to advertise, to promote these people to come and watch their adverts, a lot of media outlets resort to sensationalism so making up headlines or sort of big battles between two people or something, um, rivalries and to make it exciting for the public and promote the sport but it can, it, it's, it can be a good thing it brings more people to the sport but it can be a bad thing because you know if it's so, something they've made up, something false then it can have a negative impact on the athlete or the team who weren't expecting that you know thrust them into the limelight when they weren't expecting it at all and have a negative impact on their performance a um, really good thing about the media is the analysis that it provides, both for um, coaches, pundits, players, um, and spectators as well. You know, it's really good for all of them. You know, all the camera angles, everything like that, it means that people can see sport in a whole new light. And people can, um, players can see how to improve in loads more ways. They call these angles. They can see where they're going wrong and where they're going right and you know how to maximize their performance. Uh, a use, the new use of um, try line and goal line technology moves a lot of dispute on whether or not points have been scored. You know, if the ball's got bounced off the crossbar and into the goal, or if it bounced out, if the ball was grounded before the player went into touch. You know, a lot of things that used to be subject to whether the referee was in the right place at the right time, um, whether the linesman was there, where the linesman was from, things like that and now we can just see on the TV you know exactly whether or not it's true or not whether they did score which makes games way more fair and then the tele television replays allow the viewers to relive great moments during a game or event so they never miss anything important or exciting you know if something someone's bowled out in a spectacular way or a really big try or something you know someone, they're never going to miss it you're always going to be able to see it so at least that 
that greater level of immersion that we talked about earlier. Um, with the media, the growth of the media in sport comes the new things come with it, like pay-per-view. So pay-per-view used to make sense when television was free. Which it is in certain cases, but a lot of them now, people pay for their television packages. Um, as a result of this, when people pay, already pay for their television, like Sky, and they pay for their sports, they expect to get all the sports with it and not have to pay an extra fee to see something like boxing. Um, this means that more and more people are going to turn to either internet streaming of, of the event, which is going to damage the revenue for boxing, or they're going to go down to like a local pub or a local sports bar or something and watch it there. All of these things mean that things like boxing will have will have a loss in revenue, and as a result, the sport's going to suffer. Like there is obviously big money in boxing, but this amount of money is going to go down and down and down. The more people are going to be charged to pay to watch it. So it has, it has, they have to be careful with it and they have to make sure they don't abuse it. Um, with separate television companies comes the battle for television rights to broadcast the sport to their audience. You know, television channels want want the right to broadcast so they can get the advertising money from the sport, from the increased level of viewers coming to watch it. And in the case of the BBC and the ITV, it's not a big problem. They're universal sport, they're universal channels. Anyone can watch them wherever they are. But however, if a company like Sky get the rights to um, broadcast a sporting event, then it can become a problem because Sky are a premium service and as such not as many people have access to them. This means a lot of people could miss out on sporting events that they really want to watch, which, you know, it could lead to a fall in revenue for the sport because they're missing out on this big viewership, a fall in exposure and, you know, in the end game, a fall in participation as, you know, these people watch other sports that they can watch all the time. Um, sporting reviews on media outlets. Reviews can have both good and bad effects on sport, mainly from the respect of the athletes, but also for the viewers. Reviews can have impacts on teams, like big impacts on teams, as you know, good reviews can give teams a boost, boost morale. Um, but bad reviews for a team that's already losing can be really demoralizing, really put them down and send them into a bigger losing streak, which we really don't want. Um, in terms of viewers, reviews are usually a good thing, though. They provide an extra level of analysis that a viewer might not have known from the expert analysts that um, write the reviews and, you know, promotes the sport as well. Um, new technologies in sport like internet booking and live streaming. Internet booking allows more and more people to take, um, to go to live games as the tickets are infinitely easier to book. You know, you don't have to wait on the phone for ages and try and book it that way, you just go on the internet a few clicks and you've got and you've got your tickets, pay on PayPal, you don't even need to use a card. Um, increased exposure to the sport and allows people to follow their teams way more easier. Um, things like internet streaming as well has led to a huge increase in sport, um, in popularity of sports at every level. In sports like swimming, whose events only get televised during the World Championships and the Olympics, it allows people to watch competitions live from the comfort of their home that they wouldn't have normally been able to see because they wouldn't have got the TV exposure. This means they can sort of follow swimming a whole lot easier and not have to rely on reading written reports, which is a bit boring, and you don't get the same experience. Um, to conclude, media has had a huge impact on sport and will continue to do so, obviously, as it gets, as becomes a bigger and bigger aspect of our lives. Um, it has allowed sport to advance and grow exponentially, and as long as it's not abused and used solely for the use of making money, then it's an invaluable asset to everyone involved. But we just need to make sure that we use it in the right way, at the right times, and don't let it become just an avenue for people to make money and abuse the sport. <laughs>